My name is Melinda Bin. I'm head of school at French American International School, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to Being Bilingual here at SF Jazz tonight. Tonight, we hope to inform, intrigue, and inspire you. We have four takeaways for you from tonight's program. Compared to most adults, little kids are linguistic geniuses. They have the biological potential to acquire any of the world's 7,000 or so languages. At this age, there is a rapid, buzzing intensity of activity in the brain as the neural networks are formulated, configured, in response to lived experience. Let's observe one of our younger students at the beginning of her bilingual journey. Is it difficult for you to learn English? Is it difficult for you to learn English? Yes. The children quickly develop comprehension. Soon, at uh, their own pace, they begin expressing themselves. And they move from a stage of a mere reception to a uh, um, period of oral production. Later, in uh, upper elementary, they combine uh, their learning in both languages to, to construct, to generate new knowledge. Let's observe uh, Sylvia as she reflects on her recent uh, science investigations. We were to dissect uh, an owl pellet. So you know how an owl, it doesn't really eat it, it just uh, swallows it and then it um, sort of barfs up. What I found was actually a rat's skull. Our teacher asked us to draw it, and I drew my rodent skull on the little tooth. And in the beginning, we drew it too. Like when it was whole, it sort of looks like a, sort of like a watermelon, sort of. But it, it um, definitely doesn't look like one, only the shape is like that. At French American, uh, our students learn in and out of the classroom. We deeply believe that uh, experiential learning generates authentic uh, opportunities to use the target language. Being away from our parents and having to like say what we need and having that sense of freedom, I think it really made us more mature. I also came back feeling more like a hardened traveler. Our students not only learn French, they learn in French. One of the most important things about being bilingual is that one language continues, continuously informs the other. So being in a bilingual environment stimulates you to think differently, to look at the world differently. Let's ask our eighth grade students to reflect on their bilingual education. We get to express our ideas and opinions in two different languages. In Morocco, I was able to connect more with Arabic and with Arabic speakers. I got a better understanding of how they use the language in everyday life. And the best part for me was that I got to interact with some local Arabic students and have some simple conversations. Recently, we have been uh, studying the Théorème de Thalès, which is all about the ratios of sides of similar triangles. What I like about this is that it forms a bridge between algebra and geometry. Overall, I love having two different perspectives on math, though I do honestly prefer the French approach because they're more real-world problems to solve. The two languages of high-functioning bilinguals are distinct, yet mutually reinforcing. Both languages simultaneously play into thinking and an emerging sense of identity. I believe that a language is the essence of a culture, and each culture has its own approach to literature. For example, when we write commentaries in French, our writing is deeper and more thorough because it's focused on the depth and quality of the content. Our essays discuss several themes that are connected, where each theme is then divided in several points, and each point is developed and analyzed in detail. 
In French, éthique refers to questions that are ultimately about me. On the other hand, morale in French refers to public questions. They're questions of right and wrong that have more to do with my interactions with my fellow human beings in the public arena. However, in English, morals and ethics are nearly synonymous, and this makes it very difficult to distinguish between the two, this, these two types of questions. In uh, an American style lab, per, or the English style lab perhaps, assume that the reader has a certain degree of knowledge about optics or refractive indices of different materials or whatever, but in the French um, way that uh, tip is are written, we have um, very little a priori knowledge is assumed of the reader, so even though it may be less efficient, I find that it's more elegant and more understandable. We have a sort of core science class that everyone takes in their freshman year at Columbia called Frontiers of Science, and in it, it tries to instill a lot of these scientific habits of mind. I think going in with um, an, an approach and a scientific mindset that was actually somewhat different from what all my peers had actually helped me contribute more effectively to the classroom. To think about the fact that there isn't just one way of responding to this prompt, um, there isn't just one way of presenting an answer, and there isn't one way of you know, laying out a, a mathematical operation. And I think that that's what bilingualism teaches, is that there's always these different approaches, and it kind of gives you a toolbox um, of different ways to go about getting to a solution and it allows you to pick whichever one you think is going to work the best. For our students, being bilingual provides a richer array of possibilities that prepares them for nothing less than successful and fulfilling lives, and ultimately, for making a better world. I hope that we have informed, intrigued, and inspired you this evening. We are inspired daily by our students, and I'd like to ask you to join me in thanking them one last time for what they've done tonight. Oh, les si fous quand on est